Hi, this is Mark E. Crew, and I'd like to give you a little bit of macro help. A friend of mine asked me, can you help me with macro field order on output being equal to the macro field on input? So let me explain that a little bit better to you with data. I have an input file that has a count, date, original 1, 2, and 3, and we're going to go into a macro that's going to append a field or two. And we're going to hit play. And on output, I have a count, date, original 1, 2, and 3, but I've got test and test 2, and they're in the data, and they're messed up into the data. So what we want to do is preserve the original input order and be able to append data to it. So what was sent to me was a sample macro that basically had an append field, a test field, uh, a test field being appended, and a select. And so we're looking at this as the heart of the macro. It could be doing many things inside of the macro, but really what we want to do is see test and test2 appended to the output. So let me fast forward you to another macro. Looks very similar. We're going to hit play. And on output, we're going to see a count, date, original 1, 2, 3, test, and test2. So what's different between my macro and the macro that was sent to me? Well, if we take a quick look again at the macro that was sent to me, there's no control being placed on it that inputs are going to be in the same field order as the output. We'll also notice that this input has a field map. And in that field map, we have a field called account and date. Now, it may be that you have a very specific use case, and these field names are very specific to your use. Uh, what I find is that account could be ACCT, it could be many different accounts, or dates could be many different dates. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to address that as well inside of the macro. So we'll see that there's a show field map, which is a requirement that we're going to uh, put into the macro that you've got to, as a user, say which field is account and which field is date. So we're going to come to the macro that I've constructed, and I've got that input. And what I've done is I put an MC underscore. It could just be underscore account underscore or uh, underscore date underscore, something to be able to be different from any expected input. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to place an action with that. And I'm going to connect from the Q anchor to the Q anchor and use update select with reverse field map. Now you're not going to see this option until you actually connect the action to the select. So if I wanted to go and put a select on here just to show you, and I put a uh, interface tool on, and I'm going to put an action here, so nothing's connected. And I take this queue to the queue. Then I see these three options. But as soon as I connect this action to a select, it's update select with reverse field map. And what that's going to do is it's going to resolve any differences in field names. So as I'm building the macro, I'm going to use field names that are sensible to me in the macro. And what I'm going to do on output is I'm going to return those field names to their original field names on input. Here we see the heart of her macro. And you'll also notice that there's an update select here as well. We'll get to that in a minute. So in this input, I have a select where I'm taking and I'm saying, I want to update my fields. 
and I'm going to allow unknown fields to come through here, and I'm going to use the Select Records tool. I'm going to select the first record, only the first record, and then I'm going to skip that first record. So what's really only coming through this process is the metadata about the record, the fields, their uh, types, their order, very important. And so when I see this metadata, I'm going to push through whatever the file layout was from the input into a union tool. I'm going to configure this to be auto configure by name. I'm going to ignore and output all fields. But most importantly, I'm going to check set a specific output order. So this is going to take the first non record in and it's going to set up the data to actually flow through it and put in the field order that I want. I'll then read in this new set of data, which I want to keep and I want to append to the data and create output. One thing that I said I would get back to is this other select. In this other select, I'm now changing the name of account to MC account. I'm changing date to MC date. And I'm going to use them in some formulas or uh, uh, transformations. But when I come through here, I want to make sure that my fields have the right names from their input. This update select was just to make sure that the fields are in the right order with the right names. This select is actually taking care of the data. And now when I come through this process and output, my data comes out in the original order with the original names. Hopefully this is helpful to you. Uh, I encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel and learn more. Thank you very much.